Hello, I'm Dr. Gamby, and today I thought we'd maybe spend some time talking about pollution and things you can do to unpollute yourself. Uh, I'd like to give you ideas of, uh, about things that uh, are not too experimental, that uh, are readily applicable to most of us and uh, within the reach of all of us to some degree. You can go from one extreme to just uh, reducing your intake of processed food to uh, going into a detox center or an environmental unit and get a, uh, a very uh, highly technical, uh, expensive uh, detoxification program. But that's usually reserved for people that are, are extremely sick. <coughs> so first of all, I'll talk about the fact that there is a, a significant problem with environmental pollution. Uh, I first became aware of this about 20 years ago when I read this book called The Kellogg Report, which which covers just a, a wide variety of things. It's, it's the, the subtitle is The Impact of Nutrition, Environment, and Lifestyle <coughs> on the Health of Americans, and it is a significant impact. But let's just maybe cover a few things uh, about the problem, and uh, as you become aware of these things, you'll be able to do more to reduce your risk of being affected by them. <laughs> so is there pollution? Well, it's very interesting. The, several years ago, they uh, they tested some Oregon, Oregonians, and they tested, uh, and this is reported in the Register Guard November 13, 2007, and <clears throat> they tested people from Klamath Falls to Pendleton, and everyone had significant amounts of pollution. In fact, one of the persons here that was tested, <coughs> a... Uh, uh, Dana, a 22-year-old Oregon State University student, was born almost a decade after PCB was removed from uh, the environment, well, manufactured products, and yet she had a significant level of PCB in her system. Uh, they've tested uh, newborn children, and they have found over 200 chemicals in brand new babies. And so it's a significant problem. Uh, so where does it come from? Well, there's food contamination. Very few of us get a really a clear, pure diet. Uh, if you make a special effort, if you maybe go up into the uh, Coburg Hills or someplace like that, or maybe in the you, you go southeast of Burns, Oregon, you might get a pollution-free environment. But that doesn't necessarily mean your food will be that way. And so in, di in addition to what's put in the soil and, and comes through the air, uh, we have food additives, and processed food is loaded with additives. Uh, and the bottom line is most additives are put there to prolong the shelf life of the food. And there's a long list of those, and well, we won't try to list them now. You can probably Google that idea on, uh, you know, on your computer and come up with an extensive list of the things they add to food that... Uh, but water pollution... Uh, interestingly, my son sent me a, a list of chemicals found in the water in Phoenix, Arizona. And the list had 27 different items. And it's always, of course, for our protection to sterilize the water. But it's interestingly, they, they, even though they usually check uh, most water supplies and make sure it doesn't have bacteria in it, they usually do not check for a variety of environmental chemicals. So you may be getting... Uh, Pollution most likely you're getting pollution from from your water supply. If, you, if you're in a city and have a public water supply, it will have chlorine in it, and hopefully not fluoride. Chlorine is a, uh, a chemical called a halogen, and it is uh, competes with iodine for important uh, biochemical uh, reactions, and especially if you uh, shower. You're breathing uh, chlorine gas, uh, and it can be absorbed through your skin. <coughs> there's air pollution. There's there's literally hundreds of chemicals in the air. And as you've been to, to any major city, and you see the the smog. And in, uh, I have a son that lives in Hawaii, and they, over there they call it uh, a bog because of the volcanoes. That uh, he lives on the Big Island, and there there is always a bog on the Big Island. We have indoor chemicals. 
and especially if you have uh, an energy efficient home, which generally means it's, it's sealed so you don't get heat leaking to the uh, outside of your home. Uh, the windows are, are uh, airtight, and so uh, any chemicals that happen to be in the home uh, stay in the home. Uh, and then we put in synthetic carpets, and we clean our carpets, and we use plastic utensils, and we heat the plastic, and we microwave, and, and it's just a, a large number of ways we get indoor pollution. Um, dry cleaning. Chemicals uh, are another problem. Occupational exposures, uh, even people working in a wood mill get uh, environmental exposure from the chemicals there. If you work, if someone works in a plywood mill, there's a there's a large number of chemicals that go into the glues that make up the plywood, and it's just almost impossible to avoid the uh, outdoor pollution. Um, it's interesting that if we. This time of year in Eugene, uh, and again in the fall, we have a lot of fog, and of course the, that means there's somewhat of an air inversion, so the chemicals from the exhaust fumes, uh, wood fires, all stay close to the ground, so we uh, inhale them. There's toxic waste, there, all sorts of toxic waste that, uh, from manufacturing. I remember once I was canoeing down the, the Willamette River with a bunch of Boy Scouts, <clears throat> and we came uh, just south of, or rather, just north of Harrisburg. <clears throat> the, the color of the river changed. It was kind of a, a deep uh, bluish green uh, prior to that, and after we, there was a very definite point. You could, you could actually, there's almost a line in the water where it changed colors. And we see the effluent from the James River uh, paper mill that is just north of Harrisburg, and that's where they. Uh, put their theoretically clean uh, runoff into the Willamette River. Uh, there were still ospreys in the, in the area, so I guess the fish weren't too badly affected, but anyway, I, it just wasn't as, uh, in, as enjoyable uh, swimming and boating in the water after it changed colors. Uh, there's actually, uh, some of these chemicals that we put into uh, the environment are actually cause cancer, and uh, in they have two or three pages of, in the Kellogg report about the carcinogens that we uh, are, that are pollutants. Uh, they ban them eventually, but uh, usually if they ban one, there's two or three more that takes its place, and then frequently it's years before we recognize the carcinogenic property of that particular chemical. <coughs> Frequently, it's only tested for a short period of time, and then it uh, gets on the what they call the FDA grass list, G-R-A-S, which, which means it's generally regarded as safe, uh, short-term, uh, limited testing, and you apparently get on the grass list. There's dental materials. Uh, if you grew up like I did in the 40s and 50s, uh, the mercury amalgams were, were the mainstay of uh, dental repair. And uh, I remember I <coughs> grew up in Portland, Oregon, and uh, the Willamette Valley is notorious for its soft water and subsequent dental problems. And I was in the Navy. I went to the, the dentist in the Navy, and I, we, I think we were in Japan at that time. And he looked in my mouth and he said, oh, you must be from the Willamette Valley. And because I had a lot of amalgams in my mouth. That's less of a problem now, but the list of chemicals that go into the variety of dental materials, not only the amalgams, but the glues and the root canal material, and the now we're getting uh, the composites. These are all chemicals, and although they're probably less toxic than mercury, they're still chemicals, and we don't have as long a history uh, reviewing the, the effects of these things, but they are uh, chemicals that your body has to deal with. And then we have radiation. We get a certain amount of natural radiation, and when we go on airplane trips, we get additional radiation. And now with the uh, nuclear accident in Japan, uh, that's going to become much more of a problem. Unfortunately, uh, what we hear from the, the news media, maybe from governments, isn't always an accurate reflection of what's going on. I, I, I see this as a real dilemma because uh, there's not much um, our government can do about it. But we know that once this radiation gets in the atmosphere, it gets in the, in the 
plants. The animals pick it up, strontium, I think it's strontium-190 or something like that. Or, um, it's easily absorbed by cows and it gets into their milk. And most places when they, uh, uh, if there's been radiation exposed, they frequently uh, ban milk. And so all those, and now we, uh, and that's it. Then in addition to strontium, we have radioactive iodine, we have cesium, and uh, since most of us are iodine deficient, uh, the radioactive iodine becomes more of a problem. And so the, these are all things we, essentially, the majority of them we cannot avoid. Now, th there's a few of these. Now, you can, you can clean up your food. Uh, you can, if you can afford it, you can o go organic. If you can't afford it, you can learn to, how to, to neutralize some of the additives and the things they spray foods with by uh, washing them, cider vinegar, baking soda. There's, way, there's things you can learn to do to protect yourself from the excessive contamination of fresh produce. You know, some things uh, you can peel, obviously. But uh, we can avoid food additives that are in prepared food, canned foods, box foods, uh, because it's, it's uh, almost unbelievable the things we allow to be put in our foods. Next time you go to the grocery store and pick up something like hamburger helper or um, a, a soup mix or sometimes just a, a vegetable soup, and you'll see that there could be 20 or 30 different things in the food, many of which are chemicals. Uh, we should avoid, at all costs, uh, things like the artificial sweeteners and the MSG and the food dyes. These are known uh, uh, cytotoxins that like we talked about before. And uh, they're easily absorbed, uh, easily uh, identified, and we can absorb, uh, avoid them. And there are substitutes we can use uh, for sweeteners and things of that nature. Uh, indoor chemicals. Uh, as nice as new carpet is, it's very toxic. Uh, one of the major toxins is formaldehyde, which in the past has been used. It was used extensively in the glues and the backings. And I'm not sure how extensive its use is anymore, but uh, you can't avoid it. You can ask the person you buy it. And there's also a way to neutralize formaldehyde uh, in those carpets. It's with the use of industrial strength ammonia, and there's a protocol for that. And if you're interested, you can send my office a um, SASE, and I will send that to you. It does a good job of neutralizing, but you've got to be careful about the dry cleaning and the plastic. Uh, materials. Uh, you shouldn't, uh, I'm, I do not think people should use uh, microwave uh, ovens. I don't think you should put your plastics in the dishwasher. And I think you should just become a hairsprays, uh, uh, shampoos, uh, a variety of soaps are, are, uh, can be toxic. And so uh, it, it's just a matter of you becoming more aware of that. And, I, well, in a minute, we'll get to the reason for this. Um, occupational exposures, sometimes there's not much you can do about that. You know, we all have to work. Uh, we have to, we can avoid toxic waste, though. Uh, most of the time, if you, if you buy a new home, you're not always sure where, what was on that land before you build it there. You can avoid uh, building or buying a home near a busy street. Uh, that's another way to avoid those things. You can talk to your dentist about less reactive chemicals. Avoid uh, the uh, amalgams, of course, and uh, try and minimize your exposure to things. Uh, root canals, is, that's a real dilemma because uh, it's important to keep our teeth, but on the other hand, root canals uh, put a small focus of infection in your gum permanently, and uh, among, in some circles, uh, it's very controversial. Uh, radiation, there's not a whole lot we can do th about that. Now, the reason, <coughs> the reason I talk about this, uh, recently there's, there's a book published called uh, The Autoimmune Epidemic. Uh, it's available on Amazon, and I don't know if you can see it. The author is Nakazawa, but I think if you Google the autoimmune epidemic, you'll see, you won't find very many uh, 
But what this book points out, and it's written by a lay person, and it, it's, uh, so it's really quite understandable. What this book points out is that one of the reasons we're having this epidemic of autoimmune disease that is currently uh, happening is that these environmental chemicals disrupt normal function of our immune system and our endocrine system. So what happens in, when our body gets exposed to these various chemicals, uh, the immune system becomes disrupted and we tend to react to ourselves. And if it happens to be blood vessels, you could have migraine headaches, you could have hypertension. If it happens to be your thyroid, you can become hyper or hypothyroid. If it's in your intestinal tract, you can get gastritis or colitis or irritable bowel. If it's your joints, it's arthritis. If it's your skin, it's eczema or psoriasis. There's just a large number of, of diseases that until the last you know, maybe five or ten years, we've also, they've been just separate diseases, but now we're seeing many of them have a common denominator. And because we're all somewhat definitely different, we react differently. But this book points it out. It, it'll help you become much more aware of, of what you allow in your environment, and it'll give you some ideas about what you can do. <coughs> uh, okay, how do we avoid? What, what can we do if we find ourselves with one of these chronic, or any sort of a chronic disease? I think no matter what you have, whether it's cancer or high blood pressure or, or diabetes, detoxifying yourself, cleaning up your diet, taking some supplements, will help no matter what the condition is. Uh, probably won't cure it, but it will definitely slow down the progression of the disease. Now one of the best things to help you detoxify is sweat. My, many toxic chemicals come out through our sweat. Um, many people though aren't able to, to exercise vigorously enough to sweat. Uh, second best, maybe even first best, is a sauna. Uh, if you can have access to a sauna and that kind of sweat, it it's, would be very helpful. And one of the tricks though is after you sauna, you wash it off. You don't want to just leave that toxic material on your skin. Uh, the far infrared sauna is probably the best. Uh, you can buy them for uh, $2,500. You can make one. It doesn't take a great deal of skill, and if you, uh, here again, if you want to send me an SASE, I'll send you some information about how you can make your own far infrared sauna, and I understand that you can get the material at Home Depot or Jerry's for uh, around $100 to $150. Takes maybe a weekend, but then you've got a wonderful detox program. It won't have a stereo, it won't have, you know, a few of the amenities that you can't get if you spend a lot of money. So you want to sweat. Uh, now, when you sweat, it's critical that you replace magnesium. Uh, when we exercise vigorously or just increase the body temperature, our body loses magnesium. It's a very volatile uh, mineral, and frequently it's not replaced adequately. One of the best books about detoxification is one by Dr. Rogers. It's called Detoxify or Die. And some of the things we'll talk about now here will, came from this book. It's, it's a wonderful resource. They've got phone numbers, they've got uh, lots of good information. Um, supplements are extremely important in helping your body detoxify. But one of the things we can do physically is uh, perhaps get over our aversions and maybe doing an enema. Coffee enemas are a great way because much of what we try, our body's trying to eliminate comes through the stool uh, from the liver and by helping the liver uh, make bile and neutralize the acids, it becomes a much more effective elimination organ. Uh, so uh, look into coffee enemas. Once a week, once a month, uh, even once a year would be better than uh, what most of us do. It's important that we have a healthy bowel function if we want to detoxify. When we, when we become, a healthy bowel function means that we're passing soft form stools uh, every 24 hours and it, much of what comes out was what we ate yesterday. And you can do your own transit time by eating corn or beets and making a note of when you eat it and when you see it in the toilet. If it's greater than 24 hours, 
uh, you have a responsibility to figure out what's going on uh, because that is a major way our body gets rid of toxic materials. Um, the, if you, there, there's a do-it-yourself test. If you go to this website, it's called chronicneurotoxins.com. Uh, it's a very interesting website, and uh, you can learn a lot by reading the material they have there, the frequently asked questions, etc. But it's got a test there for about 12 maybe $15, you can take a, a test. It takes about 15 minutes. It's what is called a visual contrast test. One of the first things that's damaged when we ex get exposed to environmental toxins is our visual acuity. And Dr. Schumacher has put a, a developed a test you can take online. Uh, you can actually make an account with this uh, website. And so you'll have a record of the test you took today versus the test you take in a week or six weeks or whatever you choose to do. And so it's a very reasonably priced. There are blood tests you can do to check your body. For the, there's all sorts of tests, and Dr. Rogers goes into those tests, and they range anywhere from 100 to $600 a piece. I think for most of us, uh, doing the, the visual contrast test is a great way to find out where you are. You can follow up in a few weeks and see if what you're doing is making a difference. Uh, the uh, other tests you, can, you should probably think about doing are uh, a hair analysis uh, to check for heavy metals, lead, mercury, cadmium, etc. Uh, that's the most economical way to test it. There's, there's uh, variations of this to check for heavy metals. You can do uh, a provocative tests for you have to have a shot or take some pills of, of chelating agents and then do a urine test. Uh, but a hair analysis is a pretty good screening tool, and I would encourage anybody that has uh, much dental work to have that done. Or if you live in, a, in a, one of the larger cities in the country, I would also encourage you to have that done. Uh, but and, and there are probably six or eight other tests you can have done. Uh, Dr. Rogers talks about uh, what she calls a VESPRO test. It's a pretty simple test, you, uh, but it checks for lipid peroxidation, which is another very good indication of aging and pollution. And if you're interested in that, send me a, send me a note with a, with a, make sure you tell me what you want, and I'll uh, send you information about where you can have that done. Uh, there's a wide variety of supplements you can use to uh, help detoxify yourself. But one of the, I, I think there's, well, I'll give you a few of them. There's especially magnesium. There's lipo, lipoic acid, garlic, glutathione, uh, they do chelation. And if you, uh, cholestyramine, now that's unfortunately a prescription. It's a cholesterol-lowering drug that stays in your intestine. But most of these chemicals and things are, are excreted, attached to cholesterol. And the theory behind this is that we bind cholesterol in the intestinal tract and and get it out in the stool, it's going to be pulling a lot of these chemicals with it. Uh, and so you'd have to talk to your doctor. But if you have high levels of cholesterol, you could say to your doctor, I'd rather have cholestyramine than lipoic uh, no, not uh, Lipitor or Crestor, one of those. And you might be able to have your doctor prescribe that for you. But really, the, the, the critical part of all this is trying to lower your exposure. Uh, we can do all the detox in the world, and you can have a far infrared sauna, et cetera. But if you're living in a polluted environment, it, uh, you're sort of spinning your wheels. And so I would strongly encourage you to look over your environment. Get, get Dr. Rogers' book, Detoxify or Die. Uh, read it. Uh, uh, look at your environment critically. Uh, look in your mouth. L look at your, uh, your dry cleaning, your, your home environment. The, and, and Clean up your act. And uh, then really, uh, no matter whether we're talking about rheumatoid arthritis or colitis or migraine headaches, you'll be better. And uh, however, however else you choose to treat these will be more effective. 